Hello everyone, welcome to this new Talkie Pony video. So today, as usual, we're gonna talk about the last Monty Dojo, which was the 34 and it was called CCTV Manager. So today we're gonna talk about predictable tokens and Python EML visualization. So this one has been developed by Bermans and is mining code in Python. Usually we have a look to the settings port of the challenge, but in this case, it's not gonna be useful because we have mainly HTML and CSS stuff, so it's not gonna be useful uh, in our challenge. So as you can firstly see, um, time, UML, and random have been imported. Firstly, we have the definition of a class called firmware, which is not going to be useful, so we're going to skip this one too. After that, we have the definition of a custom method called gentoken, uh, which is taking as a parameter a seed. As you can see, random.seed is used, and maybe you know it, maybe you don't, but random in Python is not secure. So we will go deeper in see why just after. As you can see, after there is a join with random choices, um, which can uh, contain A to F and 0 to 9 uh, in low case, with a length of 16. Just after, we can see that token root is defined with this custom method, and we know the seed because in this case, the seed is literally time. So the time method in Python is basically the actual Unix timestamp. So as you can guess now, we know the seed and we know that random is not secure, so we can maybe try to know the token. After that, we have our two different user input, YAML config and token guest. Just to let you see, this is how the challenge is looking and yeah, it deserves to be highlighted because uh, it's a really, really beautiful uh, front end. <laughs> As usual, Bermans is doing a good job. <laughs> so just after we can see the access are variable defined with the boolean value of token quest equal to token root. So if both are the same, the boolean value will be defined with true and if it's not with false. Just after we have a condition. So if access means that if access is defined true, uh, data will be defined with the method yaml.lat. So we will see after how it's working and why it's unsafe. And into this yaml.load, you can see the yaml config, which is our user input. So as we know, uh, um, the function gentokan is taking a seed and then it's calling a random.seed with seed. And it's super important because in Python, random module is not cryptographically secure. If we have a look to the Python documentation, we can see that it's we can see a warning saying that the pseudo-random generator of this module shall not be used for security purpose. So that means that if we know the seed, we can simply reproduce the exact same outputs. And as you can see, is in this challenge, this seed is just uh, in uh, time dot time, which is as I said, the current Unix timestamp. So it's basically completely predictable. So now what we can do basically is literally taking the exact same implementation of the Gentokan custom method um, to do it locally. So we obviously need to be at the same time of the server. And as you can guess, it's in France. So it's my local time, so it's okay. So what I did is that I just had it uh, five seconds to have the time to educate this code and after that copy it into the dojo. And as we say into the condition, we need to have access to true. Uh, did you directly be into the yaml.log? So by having um, a correct token, we will be able to, uh, to be into this section. So if we have a look to the Python yaml.log in GitHub, we can see that unsafe loader is the same as loader, which is a little bit strange because it means that even if we don't want to be into a mean safe loader, we will be unsafe. They say that it's not secure and we will need to use um, the secure loader if we want to make something secure, especially in that kind of context in which a user input can be used uh, directly into uh, the loader. And if loader is not safe, it's because it doesn't restrict the type of object that will be deserialized or just used. So if we have a look to the Python YAML documentation, we can see into the object section that there is some pickleable object. What that means? It means that it used the pick protocol, which is used to do serialization and deserialization. And basically, deserialization is the process of taking a structured data, um, in our case, YAML, and turning it back into a program object directly into the memory. So you can see that there is some different object that we can call. 
For an example, for the apply one, you can see that if we call this one, we can directly call a module and a function of Python or a class if we decide to use the new object. So yeah, so as you can guess, uh, it's really insecure because we will typically be able to execute our own Python function. So we basically have a remote call execution by this way. So now that we know that, uh, we can typically use uh, the process module and as a function we can use, for example, popen to get the content of ants as we know that the flag is locating into env. Yeah, as you know, we can use uh, some other stuff. Then, um, as you can see, we have been successfully able to predict the token by knowing its seed and by um, using random in Python because, yeah, as you understood, it's pretty insecure to use random because it's not cryptographically secure. The behavior of the learner of um, YAML is not secure if you don't define it as a secure one because even if you don't use the unsecure uh, loader, as you saw, it's possible to use some malicious object, as we saw with the pickleable one that allow you to do visualization and by this way having remote code execution. I hope you're enjoying this video. If you have any recommendation, as usual, feel free to comment, feel free to press the button like too. And yeah, if you want to see your challenge into our next video, feel free to contact uh, Brumans or myself on X. It will be a pleasure for us. See you in the next video.